What's up guys? Today we're back at Tim's Harley Davidson to review the Road Glide in Vivid Black. Now you can also get this bike in the Gauntlet Gray as well as the Billiard Red. All three color options are chrome only. You cannot get the black and just the regular Road Glide. And before we start the video, if this is not the first video of mine you've watched and you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. It would help me out a lot. So before we start this walk around, I'll kind of show you guys the whole bike. I try to show it off in some of the B-roll shots it plays before we do the walk around, but I know it's a little different to see it all at once instead of just clips. So I'll let you guys see the whole bike before we get started. All right, so real quick before we jump into the uh, walk around, I want to point out that this bike does have the upgraded GTS boombox system. Tim's orders most of their standard models, be it the Road Glide or Street Glide, with this option. It adds like $9.95 to the price of the bike. And to me, I mean, that's a no brainer because I'll show you what the other one looks like that it comes with. So Tim's happened to have the Street Glide standard that I think slipped through the cracks and got the smaller radio option on here. This is the Boombox 4.3. And as you can see, just a lot smaller, whereas the GTS system fills out this whole box here. Uh, you have your buttons. You can still control everything from the handlebars with both systems, but that bigger screen is just a lot nicer. Touch screen, navigation, they both do Bluetooth, but for $9.95, I honestly feel like it's a no-brainer to do that upgrade. I just wanted to point that out to you guys before we started the walk around. So now that we've addressed that, we'll start the actual walk around. We always start things out on this channel with the tank badge. So I like this tank badge. I think it looks really good. I do like the one that comes on the S model just a little bit better, just for my personal taste. I'll show you guys what that one looks like. This is the tank badge for the S model Road Glide as well as the Street Glide. It's the same badge on both. I like just the standard bar and shield. I think it looks good. Nice clean look on that tank. Just wanted to show you guys the difference on those two. Also, you'll notice on the standard that you still have the same console that Harley's been doing for a while now with the gas cap underneath. Someone commented on one of the videos and what they said made a lot of sense of something I never thought about which was I think it would be nicer if this opened the other way as far as putting gas in it it would help so I know if I'm going to go on a long ride I try to really top off the tank so I sit on the bike and lean it up you know just so I can make sure I'm, I'm filling it up as much as I can and it is kind of in the way uh, not a huge deal but that might be a nice redesign for Harley to do that, or who knows, maybe next year they will move it over. So on the new models, you got a new CVO style console. They move the gas tank over. I'll show you guys that real quick as well. This is your Road Glide S console. As you can see, just way more low profile, way more sleek looking, really looks like something off of a CVO. And then they've moved your gas cap over here to the one side. Some people don't like that because it's not symmetrical, uh, but I would prefer this versus them putting just a dummy cap over here. And they do on the dummy caps, they usually have your, uh, your fuel gauge on there. But I mean, this is digital now. It tells you how many miles till empty. So I'd rather keep my tank clean, not have to deal with that because you can also get the flush mount gas cap and then you'll have nothing sticking off there. And that's a really good look. So you notice that the inner fairing on these bikes are a matte finish. No matter what color option you get, if you get the Road Glide standard model, 
that's what you're gonna get. Uh, it feels nice, it is a high quality, I mean, ultimately it's plastic. It is high quality. Uh, I don't know, I've never seen them fade or anything, so that shouldn't be an issue, but the bike feels a lot more premium with the special model that has the painted inner fairing. Uh, your glove compartments, I guess that's what we're calling these, are still the same on both bikes. You do get the USB port to charge your phone, play your music, whatever you want to do. You can also hook in like a little USB like memory stick or something, but that's kind of old school. I would mainly just use that for charging my phone and I would Bluetooth my radio stuff. But you do have that same dash on both sides. This one just does not have the USB in it. However, under this side, you do get the 12 volt plug-in. All your standard models will come with the 107 cubic inch versus the 114 that comes on the S model. The S model, you have the option for chrome or black finish on the engine components. On the standard, you do not. They all come in chrome, like I said in the beginning of the video. You have the older style engine guard. They went to a lower profile on their S models. This one is still the same. Also, these mounts will be different on the S model because the engine guard doesn't come up as high. They have another mount that comes down. Just a little different. Um, not a huge deal, but something worth pointing out and noting. One pretty big difference on the two bikes though is on the standard model, you're gonna get the Enforcer 2 wheel, which is the wheel we're looking at now. Not really a bad looking wheel. I had the Enforcer on my 15 Street Glide and didn't hate it. I'd seen a lot of guys just powder coat it black and I think I did like it a lot better that way. On these touring bikes with the saddlebags, you really don't see the rear wheel, so not a huge deal. On the S model though, you get the Prodigy wheel, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. This is the Prodigy wheel, and I'll be completely honest, this is a much more premium looking wheel. Uh, the spokes are much thinner, lower profile design, uh, this is just a way, way better looking wheel, in my opinion. And I don't typically like to spend a lot of money to change the wheels on a bike. So the wheel that it comes with is pretty important. Your front end still looks the same. You do have the LED headlights, freaking halogen turn signals. Harley kills us with that, but on the standard model, maybe I get it. But on the S model, they definitely should have done the LED turn signals. Moving around to the back, you'll see that you do not have the stretch bags, which if you've watched my other videos, you know not a big deal for me. I don't really care for the stretch bag look myself, but I know a lot of people do like those stretch bags. On the standard model, you are not going to get those. So I wanted to give you guys my final thoughts on this bike. Really nice bike, tons of power, looks great, but in my honest opinion, I would spend the extra money to get the S model for several different reasons. The painted inner fairing doesn't seem like a huge deal, but as I pointed out, it does make it feel a lot more premium, especially looking at the bike overall. It's just a lot cleaner, looks a lot nicer, a lot higher end. I'm a huge fan of the Prodigy wheels they've done on the S models, so that's another big selling point for me. The biggest selling point in all is the 114 cubic inch engine. I really like that. I also like that they give you the blacked out options because that's more my taste. So for those reasons, I would go with the S model over the standard. So excited that the sun is shining this time. We got lucky last week and we're getting lucky this week as well, it looks like. I've been at the dealership pretty much all day today filming some content for you guys super grateful for the growth of the channel so thank you if this is not your first video if it is hope you guys are enjoying it if you do do the YouTube stuff please uh, the likes subscribe share comment whatever
looks wise these handlebars that come on the road glide don't look like they would be my style but they don't feel terrible i would still replace them with something else uh, just to get them a little higher a little more narrow not angled as much but so like i said i mean it's a completely different bar from what i typically prefer and they still don't feel bad so good job to harley davidson for that and tons of traffic per usual one one positive on this non uh painted inner fairing is that it doesn't reflect the sun as much I mean, I'm sure you can see the sun is, you know, bouncing off of it, but not nearly as much as it would be if it were painted. So that's pretty awesome. I forgot my gloves, but whatever. It's always something. So like I've said before, I haven't really messed with these radios too much. Um, probably not the best time to do it. But they are really, really nice. So, that was fun. <laughs> uh, what had happened was my helmet has a matte finish to it. And I had it mounted on the mouthpiece and the mouthpiece is curved in two different ways, both sideways and up and down. So the contact point, even though those 3M GoPro mounts are very sticky, uh, there wasn't much contact. So I was already a little nervous about it and it fell off, obviously. <laughs> so luckily, as you saw, it fell in my lap, so I didn't lose it. And then noticing, watching this footage back right now that forgot to buckle my chin strap just flustered and ready to go but this is <laughs> this is a great view of my first manufacturing vest uh, the little ad that comes up right before the video plays for first manufacturing uh, plug them really quick because I bought Tim's carries their stuff and I bought one of their vests and fell in love with it so I reached out to them about us working together and uh, now I have this one. I think this one's called the 4951 Hunt Club. And it is really nice. It's like the Carhartt material on the bottom, which is called duck canvas. It's not Carhartt, but that's what everybody says. So uh, it's that material on the bottom and then this nice leather on the top. I absolutely love this thing. If you use my code SNIPES25, you get 25% off, which is huge on an already super affordable for the quality. Like I think this one retails for 200 bucks and then to get 25% off of that is crazy. But anyway, so I need to buckle this chin strap back just in case. Uh, so anyway, as I was about to say, um, so instead of turning around, going back, getting the chest mount or whatever, I've just stuck the GoPro to the top of the bike so everyone mentions I want to see the road I want to see the road so I kind of did this to uh, I don't know to maybe poke fun at that because now you're able to see the road <laughs> you're just going backwards uh, but really I just I didn't know obviously I don't trust sticking it on the helmet with the matte surface and the sticky piece is not nearly as sticky anymore so it's mounted behind the windshield where there's not a lot of wind hitting it. I felt confident in that. So this is not a new view. This is what I want the secondary view to be when I get another GoPro. I do plan to, uh, to do this view with one of the other ones, but still have the forward facing uh, mount. I love this helmet, the Simpson M30, but I've had it for a while. You're supposed to replace your helmet, they say every five years, and I used to think that was crap, and then I read the science behind it as to why, and it makes a lot of sense, so. We'll hammer on this thing real quick. Yeah, man, like. The 107 is not 
underpowered by any means in no way shape or form does it like make you feel like you need more now do you want more sure I think everyone does so the 114 is a noticeable difference but the 107 is great too I mean there's some Harleys on my radar right now that don't come with the 114 now obviously if I got the 107 I would at least probably take it to a stage two which is full exhaust uh, air cleaner tuner and a cam to go to stage two from stage one but that would just be you know wanting more not necessarily needing it so just something to keep in mind and I know I said uh, I would spend the extra money and get the S However, if that's not an option for you financially or you're just not comfortable doing that and you really want to get on one of the new road glides, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this bike, especially if you order it with the bigger screen like this one was. I mean, the wheel is, eh, you know, that's a, when you're walking up to the bike, you see it. When you're on it, you don't see it. So wheel, not the biggest deal in the world. Painted inner fairing, again it's nice, but not the end of the world. 114, nice, but 107 not underpowered. So if you just cannot bump your budget up for the S model, I would definitely say go ahead and get the, the Road Glide standard if you're looking to get on the new Road Glide. Definitely worth the money. You can do upgrades later if you want. Or just put miles on it and enjoy it. A lot of guys throw some between $350, $600 slip-ons on the back. Uh, you can do it at the dealership. I think they charge a half hour to do it. I think it's $99 is the labor rate. At Tim's and most other dealerships are right at the same. So they're going to charge you a half hour. So, you know, 50 bucks or 30 minutes in the garage. Most people are capable of doing it themselves. Give it the sound go enjoy it it's a very nice bike so pulling back up to the dealership I've got to do another review so I'm not sure <laughs> what we're gonna do about the GoPro situation I know people are gonna be real sad if I go back to the chest mount but if I do that on the next video just know it's only for the next video until I get things sorted out thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't already uh, like the video it helps me out helps me get more views which is what gets me paid and gives me more time to do this so thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next video